So tonight we're, we're continuing the Eau Claire Muskie theme with another awesome dude, guide, uh, Nick Markowitz. Nick, thanks for joining us, dude. What's yeah, going man, on? Thanks, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're pumped to get you on, dude. We were, uh, beforehand, we were just talking about Nick's sweet setup. Is that your kind of tying, uh, tying den, tying lead? Yeah, it's just a little corner of it. Uh, it's kind of chaos kind of all over the place, you know, just like everyone else's is, I'm sure. But um, it's kind of hot in here right now because I get a lot of sun. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be sweating maybe a little bit. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I, yeah. uh, I'll, be, I'll be sweating with you. We're upstairs where it's cool. a bit of a sauna. Dude, I have this funny joke about – it's not a funny joke, but, like, you know how at least my parents, when um, they would always, like, tell me – I. What, what did they say to me? Like clean, uh, clean bed, clean head, like making sure I clean my room. And, and I think, I think the same applies to fly tying spaces, but it's the opposite. Like if your yeah. fly tying space is really, really too clean, like I'm suspicious. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> right. you don't have like enough crap. You even tie, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Exactly. Exactly. No, I'm just kidding for sure. But, um, so I guess we're going to get into a lot of good stuff tonight, but you just got back from a little, uh, a little excursion out West catching muskie bait. How was that? Yeah, it was pretty fun. You know, it was a, a family vacation, a uh, small trout, um, but you know, lightweight tackle, dry flies, a lot of fun. Um, beats the August heat that we have here, you know, getting up in elevation. It's, um, it's nice and cool. So it's awesome. You know, What's good scenery up? and uh, small fish. <laughs> yeah hey we they have yeah. a lot of fish they have a lot of good scenery but yeah not definitely not uh not the big pike and musky and smally that we got over. yeah you know it's kind of a different reason of being there you know and that's that's kind of just seeing uh your your scenery what's around you, you what's know? it what's it been i mean is it have you gone out there in the past or is this your first time out there uh, i think this is my or me and my wife and uh, family's fourth time okay. out west uh what's the in, in What's the situation like out where they were? Were you any any issues with fires and water levels? I know it's I know some areas out there it's pretty dire right now. Yeah, we've seen a lot of like burn downs, um, recent ones and and ones from past years, you know, which obviously burn downs are good uh, in a way, you know, replenish and uh, everything comes back uh, more full, you know, it's just great. But um, it, it's kind of devastating to see the, see the aftermath. And uh, out there, you can see so far and uh, just tons of destruction, you know. But yeah. um, No, we, yeah. you're, you're spot on. I mean, at least we don't need to, to go deep on this. But, like, I agree with you on the burndowns. It's just we, uh, we didn't let that run its course for a long time. And now we're playing catch up. And it's not going to be pretty for a while. Right. You know? So it is, it is kind of what it is for sure. Um, I guess getting into what we're here to talk about a little bit, you know, musky, musky fly fishing. Um, and we'll venture, you know, we'll meander through that a little, but like, what's the, how did you get into this crazy stuff? I always ask that. I like that question. Cause like, this isn't, you don't find this on ESPN and in sports illustrated and your dad probably didn't musky fly fish. Like it's just one of those weird things. And like, yeah. Well, how, like how did you end up? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I got a straightforward answer to that. I love, uh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> it's it's kind of all over the place. Um, growing up, you know, with my dad, it was it was conventional, you know, very little fly rod stuff. And that and, was just to interrupt. That was Wisconsin, born and raised, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, spent a lot of time up on the triple flowage. You know, um, both my grandpa, and dad had a had a place at Indian Trail Resort. Uh, which is basically just a rustic fishing resort, you know. Um, so I spent a lot of time up there, um, you know, cutting my teeth in conventional musky fishing, which, um, you know, the, the thing I miss most about that is the top water action, you know, top water conventional baits are just super awesome. Um, but, you know, kind of going off from that, uh, just kind of, I, see, I seen this, uh, what got me into fly fishing was, I seen a recipe for, um, it was smoked trout hash, you know, just looked amazing in the picture, you know, and I guess I'm a fat guy, you know, I like food. So, um, anyways, I, I started, uh, my fuck. <laughs> oh my so 
I know. So I, was, I went out, uh, you know, with the conventional uh, spinning gear, uh, slayed the shit out of the trout, you know, kept my fair share to, to make my hash, obviously. And, right. Um, but then I think you start gaining respect more. Uh, you know, and I, my, my dad always raised me catch and release. We went out walleye fishing, uh, pan fish, you know, and, and kept fish like that. But it was mostly catch and release. And um, so I kind of gain respect more for for the fisheries you know and and uh basically branched off from there and uh went into the musky kind of been back and forth between musky and smallmouth but smallmouth really have my heart you know they're uh <laughs> so musky is kind of an off-season thing for me or sure. not off-season a season thing uh more fall you know that i stick to that so there's a reason for that. I mean, it's, it's yeah. you can be full psychopath like me who just bangs my head against a wall all summer long, or you can go get polys. You guys drive me crazy, man. I can't, I can't watch you guys. <laughs> it's, it's like, dumb. yeah, the summer, the summer lake bite in Madison is, you know, is a, is a one for, not for the faint of heart. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh, that lake stuff with the fly is, is a challenging thing, you know? Yeah, we, we, you know, that's how we keep it going. That's what makes us feel better about it. Challenge, some people call it a challenge. Some people call us morons. Uh, you, you guys can pick. But so you kind of, it sounds like you kind of got into it on the, on the warm water side. Like it wasn't the traditional yeah. went out west throwing hoppers down the snake. Like you were, you, you got to do it with smallies and muskies here in Wisconsin. Yes. What? Yeah. Cool. Yep. Cool. What, um, which is, which is super cool. You know, you and I chatted about this, and it's funny that we, we didn't do this on purpose. We have you after Steve, who are both Eau Claire, but took what I love about the muskie world is so many different paths to this, right? Mm -hmm. Steve grew up going out west, fly fishing on the Henry's Fork, and then found this. And you have been, you know, it, you're more similar to my path, which was we were fishing for muskies, and then we found fly fishing. Yeah, uh, you yeah. kind of mentioned it earlier. What, but with the top water thing. But what are some of the like things that you know compare the two for me a little bit? You know, or for the people on the call, what where you see some advantages of fly fishing, and where do you maybe see some <laughs> oh, advantages? Well, well, I see the the advantages of fly fishing on, on a lake, for instance, is is the covering water. Um, you know, being able to cast further, work your baits faster uh, if you need to. You know, um, just cover a big area. Um, where, where fly, you know, really shines on the rivers in its own way. Um, you're, you're picking apart uh, bank, you know, river banks, structure, um, not, not really pounding a vast area, you know. So, I, I mean, I, when you're comparing the, the top water side, is that what your question is? Uh, just, I want to just, you can take it whatever direction you want. Just like yeah, comparing yeah. them at a high level. Top water is one area for sure that's super interesting to think about. Yeah. I mean, top water, um, what do you got? You got divers, poppers. Uh, you don't have prop baits. You don't have uh, all that other, you know, creepers and, and globes and, and all that conventional baits that you see out there um and they all have their different not yet, sound, not you know? yet at least, right not yet but then you might as well not fly fish right, right. according to, to whoever you ask yeah um so yeah there's it, it's interesting where it's gonna go as far as I, you know i'm not huge on fly design i tie but i like watching all these uh other guys out there that are, are really innovative to the to the sport you know it's great yeah and there's a lot i always i like to dig into I don't mean this, I, I don't know, I might piss people off with this comment, but I don't find in musky fly fishing, there's a lot to learn fly-wise from right. trout and bass fly fishing. I yep. think there's more to learn from musky gear fishing as you're kind of, that's why I was kind of, you know, kind of picking at that because it's like, yeah, I think some days it's really interesting on the river when, you know, we can be a little bit more subtle and we can really kind of tease them out but there are some days where the only thing they're going to eat is double tens burned back to the boat. Like, how, <laughs> yeah. do you, how do we start to think about that as fly anglers? Is there a way, is there a way we can create some of that disturbance and noise and it hasn't been really done yet, you know? And even the conventional side is kind of seeing what guys on the fly are producing. And you know, you got stuff like, uh, for instance, a, a beaver bait, you mm -hmm. know, uh, um, very similar to a fly, 
um, but even more vibration, you know, you just get all that other extra stuff with conventional. Yep. You, know, you don't with, with the fly, you know, but um, no, both, and it, both produce fish and both are, you know, for each their own, really. You know? Yeah. And it's, it's interesting you say that because I do see the next, like, I don't know what you think, but the next like three to five to 10 years, like we're not going to have this black and white fly and conventional. Yeah. We have this blended spectrum where there's going to be rods that maybe don't look a lot like your mom and dad's old fly I rod. I think that's but, already happening. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, right. Yeah, yeah for sure. Which I, I frankly like, and maybe this comes from my background, I don't know about you, but like, I just love muskie. I really, you know, I don't, you won't find me sucker fishing, but like, other than that, I'll probably do anything else. Uh, yeah, if it's really them. cold out, I will drag a sucker just be yeah. like, there's I'll probably no. drag my fly rod. I, I've been known to do that. So yeah, <laughs> you just yeah. give up and put it off the back of the boat. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, I guess kind of going into a few, just under the rough topic of, well, I mean, first of all, is there anything else you wanted to hit on there? Like kind of the gear, fly fishing, you know, whether it's the verses or whether there's some similarities or stuff you learn from gear fishing that makes you better. The fly side of it, you know, there's a reason why I got away from conventional and that's uh, just, you know, I just enjoy the, the fly aspect of it, you know. It's like fishing, um, just fishing the flies and looking at the flies or? Yeah, yeah, just, just the takes, the eats, everything is just, um, you know, I still remember my first muskie I caught on the fly and how much more awesome that was compared to any muskie I've ever caught on convention yeah let's hear that one if you can share <laughs> oh yeah i was with my brother um this was quite a few years ago uh fishing a small river close to home and uh just you know working that fly i knew nothing about it i mean i i was just you know greenhorn uh taking a guess at everything there wasn't social media it wasn't really you know there was guys doing it but you just you didn't know how you know uh kind of learning on your own but anyways um this first fish wanted to be in a 43 incher uh fish missed it rolled on it like three four times finally ate it and, and just that right there was like you know it, i can't even explain it I mean, i'm sure you've seen that before uh in your life but um just that visual aspect of it was really what hooked me you know and uh the fight of a muskie really isn't what it's about you know it's it's more so the what happens in between you know yep and finding them and that's that's super interesting the way you talk about that because like if you didn't chase musky for those listening in uh on gear prior to fly fishing for them you don't really have that comparison you're probably just like oh this is rad musky are cool yeah. but when you hear people say like they just take it differently they just look at it they treat it they eat it we see we might see more of them we might not get more of them in the bag, but we see, you know, they just pop up. Like, I think that's for sure. That's what got me hooked was just right. like, holy cow, that was different. Yeah. 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 What up? I think that's the other thing too is uh, going over the, the fly side of things is you kind of think outside the box. Uh, what's different? What don't these fish see often, you know, kind of kind of approach to it. Um, where everyone's throwing double 10 cowgirls, you know, <laughs> top raiders, double 10 the top raiders. Yeah. 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 Hey, yeah. they produce, but yeah. you know, they're I totally agree. Um, so you kind of talked a little bit about it there and I'm just for like, you know, at, at musky fool, at least we get a range of people. We get guys who have been musky fly fishing for a long time, are mm -hmm. very, very proficient anglers. And we get folks who are looking to, try it out for the first time especially for the folks trying it out for the first time you know like you know how did you go through that process you know nowadays it's like youtube and social media and hire a guide and obviously we recommend you hire a guide and you know nick would be one of those you should for sure check out but like in your own words you know what was it like to just kind of figure it out and like i you know i love that part of things that learning curve it's a little painful but yeah it's a lot of where the fun happens well, I think uh, you coming from a conventional side too, you kind of understood what um, what rod you were looking for. And up until recently, um, you know, I love Tom's rod, the Chippewa River rods. That's what I personally use. Um, and everyone's got their own opinion on what's the best out there, you know. And 
Um, but just the, the biggest thing for me was what rod is, is good. What, you know, what do I use? What doesn't give in on the figure eights? You know, when you go on the figure eights and you got that huge bend in your rod, it just doesn't feel right, you know? And uh, uh, extra heavy action, conventional musky rod doesn't do that, you know? So um, comparing the two, I think guys like us maybe had um, a little jump on it, you know, just kind of knowing, you know, what's right. And even down to the snaps, if you're a snap guy, there's so many snaps out there. Um, and I think throwing big 16 ounce conventional baits really put the test on a lot of, a lot of snaps, you know, so, so you, you get a better understanding of, of what, um, from our background. Yep. You know, what so you for, it, yeah. For, for, for conventional guys, it's less about learning how to fish for muskies and it's more about learning fly fishing because the muskies, yeah. muskies are muskies, you know, until they're, until they're not right. That makes sense. The hardest part for conventional guys is the, the strip set. <laughs> they just you want know. to give it to them. Like yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> I struggled with that for, you know, and still from time to time, I still do, you know, I'm not going to lie, but um, it, it happens. And, uh, but that's, that's a no, no, it's something you don't want to do. <laughs> no. I actually got yeah. to the point uh, this year for like the first time in a while I was fishing it was just, it was one of those days I picked up the old bait caster and was just chucking bombs. And it was like the opposite. I was just like, shit, what do I, what do I, oh, is that a weed? Oh, wait, that might be a fish. I can't even feel it. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, like you said, the figure eight, it was just like a broomstick. And I was like, oh, wow, I forgot how this feels. And it was, yeah. it was a little <laughs> odd to go back that way. But yeah. uh, good, good, good. Um, so to take this a little different direction, um, and I, I want I want your perspective on this because of your gear your gear background too. You know, slow days. We talk about like everyone knows, and Weisner talked about this, and we can all talk about like those days where the muskie are just jumping in the boat, and they are few and far between. But there are some days where it's like you just you could put your hand in the water and they might bite it. Special days, man. Special <laughs> days, right? Those are fun. We all go searching for those days. We're not going to talk about that right now. I want to talk about the slow days. What are you, as a guide, as an angler, you know, when it's slow and you got a client in the boat, and and obviously, you know, keep your secrets, your secrets. But whatever you're willing to share with us, what what are you thinking about? How are you trying to find them? What are you, you know, are, what are some How of do you the, keep the client into it? that that or, too yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that client and the fish like how are you what are you wait till they're not looking or paying attention you say oh my god there's a huge fish did you see it <laughs> that's what you do no um i don't know tough days you know what happens with with any fish species that you're fishing you know um i think the the thing with musky on the fly is you can't think about catching a fish you just have to go out, you know, go through the motions, get your mind off catching a fish. Cause that's when it's going to happen, you know, but, but still pay attention, you know, be focused, um, but not be, have be focused, but not like, I want to catch a muskie. I want to catch a muskie. Yeah. It's the more you want it, the less like, it's weird. It's a weird curve with muskie. Like the more you're like, it's going to happen today. The weather it's yeah. perfect. It's like, nah, yeah. ain't going to happen then. <laughs> but muskie fishing is really about time. You know, you can, you can sit home, let's say you can't fish a day and, and you look outside and it's just overcast, like prime musky day and you're like, fuck, I can't get out and fish, you know? Um, and then you have bright sunny days around the river, you're like, oh shit, this is gonna suck and you have a phenomenal day, you know? Um, so I guess where I'm going with that is, is put the time in uh, for muskies, you know, you're, you're gonna interact with fish, you know? Yep. That's something you can do once or twice a year and expect, ah, oh, shit, I didn't get a muskie, you know, it's kind of a, a grind, you know? Yeah, no, you, and I, I asked that because I think your perspective on it's very, you know, you got a different take. And then there's also the similarities across everybody, which is the time and the grind. And like, I like yeah. to hear, I like to have people hear that again. Like we're not, we're not BSing right it's just that's kind of the special part and the frustrating part of muskie is like um you know i've heard i don't know who said it to me first but kind of the blue collar like you can't really buy a muskie i mean you can go pay for guide trips um yeah. but like you still gotta put the work in and 
right. it's not necessarily like oh you spooked it or oh you didn't have seven x tip it or oh you didn't mend upstream you messed up your figure eight <laughs> right it's, it's yeah it's and, and even if you uh spend the time doing it uh and you have the more you do it the more musky interactions you have you're still going to mess up on fish. Even even the seasoned guy that has been doing it for 20, 30 years um, are, are going to mess up at some point, you know. Um, they catch you off guard, you know. At, at well, that, that's, that's for sure. And that's where I think experience in muskie matters in a different way. Not, yeah. yeah, okay, you get better at casting and you trout set less and you do better figure eights. But honestly, I think it was – I think it might have been Brian Porter in Zero to Hero that said it to me for said it first and I heard it where it's like musky fishing most of the time is just replaying previous eats while you're fishing <laughs> you know like oh it could happen right there it could oh maybe right like you're just and it's like yeah. hours and hours and hours of that but the more you have the more you have this like library of memories you yeah. know what can I do different next time you know exactly exactly yeah so and that's that all comes with experience and time on the water you know yeah. Um, and speaking of time on the water, what I would, I think the more time on the water we all have the crazy, the more crazy weird shit happens. We got a question here from, uh, Karen Clark. What's up, Karen? Uh, he says, Nick, what's the craziest, weirdest thing you've ever seen out on the water that you can, you feel comfortable sharing, of course. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only, I haven't been doing this for too long, so I don't have a lot of crazy stories. Um, personally this last year I, <laughs> it was quite funny that i had i had this uh i can't even remember his name right off the hand uh but he just it was a really hot day he just rolled out of my boat into the water shirt off and you know he's a bigger guy um not flattering at all <laughs> and he just walked over to this rock pile and just sat there in like this really awkward pose you know um just because and it, it was hilarious you know but I, I haven't seen a lot of crazy stuff you know he um, sounds like he was full of confidence though <laughs> he was yeah that's great <laughs> i wouldn't do that you know but um you know there's i fish a little bit in the old claire area and you, you get some uh, a lot of drunk people yeah down you see you know crazy stuff with that but yeah yeah. Sorry, that's a terrible answer. Dude, but. No, I, I, I'm visualizing this character, like kind of model posing awkward. I think I have a picture on my phone, but it's really far away. You know. Yeah. Like who's it, that? It was an awesome dude, and uh, I that was a highlight for me this. Oh, year. it sounds like he's right here in the chat. He said that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, I, oh, I wish he was, man. <laughs> uh, but no, that that was. Uh, I think about that from time to time. I don't know. I mean, yeah. You know. Do you have like any, I don't know, it might just be my messed up brain, but do you have any fish that you just like, they're the ones that kind of, when you close your eyes, they're the ones that you're kind of like, man, what the hell happened with that one? I was like, the ones that haunt you a little bit? Yes. Um, <laughs> I think any missed opportunity at a muskie haunts you, you know? Yeah. Um, but I can't, you know, I can't think of one, yeah. you know right off the bat i guess but um I, there, there's been times yes <laughs> yeah we all we all you all, yeah. all have them jen was like over here being like well i had one on sunday and it was uh i think if you were in the dane county area you might have heard a high-pitched scream right after a missed strip set it was uh, a <laughs> <laughs> oh, for me i could recall more opportunities in bow season uh sitting in the tree stand you know i think that heartbreaking opportunities but um yeah musky fishing is you just gotta laugh at at uh when you fuck up on something you know that's maybe that that's like maybe that's the theme of today's discussion because that's like that's what <laughs> i need to be told more often you know yeah. i'm the one like questioning my existence you're pretty hard on yourself when you uh yeah it's like life is over i can't speak to anybody i'm gonna go tie flies until my hand falls off because that's <laughs> you know like that doesn't do shit you know and you just grind yourself into a pool. you got to put hooks in your flies don't forget ah shit <laughs> you tell me now dude we're like 30 minutes in uh, yeah sorry man <laughs> that's a big one 
Uh, well, other than other than hooks and the pointy stuff, here's here's a good one. Um, and your most important piece of gear that you like think if and I know that's kind of a weird question because it's all important, but like, what's the piece that you know whether it's the watercraft or the boat or the sunglasses or the attitude? Like, what's the most important piece to you? Um, I didn't really want to get into boat here, but I think then not um, that piece, not important. Yep. Yeah, I mean, obviously, any boat you can catch muskies with um, a, a jet boat, canoes, kayaks. Um, yeah, I mean, I ran, I ran a drift boat for for quite a few years, and and having fish that you can't go back on, um, let's say during a prime opportunity, prime time, whatever window, um, yeah, that kind of sucks, you know. So ha- having the power boat to go back and fish prime areas at prime times um is really key you know in my opinion to cover water and fish the good water um you might miss fish the in the in-between water um but you know so that's a that's a pretty big advantage you know what um, about like tackle wise or you know i mean tackle wise like gear line you know in terms of you know some people obsess about their flies and some people are like the flies don't really matter they just got to be sharp like, yeah man I'm, I'm kind of with flies um i always ask the person who's in my boat or myself do i have confidence in this fly like don't ask your guide like you know i can i can recommend stuff for you like this is what i would throw this is a good color um but are, when you fish it are you 100 percent confidence in that you know because if you don't have confidence in something, you're not going to fish it 100%. You know, you're not going to be focused. Um, so I think having a fly that really you're into is is huge, you know. And it and, uh, doesn't matter what color, really, you know, in a river situation, in my opinion. What keeps um, you focused? You put it past a fish, good presentation, that fish is hungry. He's going to move on it, you know, and hopefully he eats. Right. And hopefully you get a good set. Yeah. <laughs> No, those are two good points. I mean, this, what you said earlier, the first one about like, that's why as much as it can be harder. And I think sometimes weirder for fly anglers, like that's why I love lakes because I can go back to the fish a hundred times. I can literally be like, okay, there's a front rolling in and a new moon. Let's pack the boat and quick throw it in for an hour. Yeah, you know, which is which is GPSs yeah. and waypoints, man. Right, right. And it, <laughs> you know what? That doesn't always work, but it, it does work frequently on lakes. Um, yeah, and the fly comment's so true. I, we, you and I joked about this earlier today when we were chatting. Like, you know, you get a musky guy start talking about flies, he'll tell you color doesn't matter, and then he'll talk about color for two hours. He'll tell you size doesn't matter, and then he'll talk about size for two. You know, like. It's confidence is what it all points back to, and and it, yeah. it's the ebb and flow. Some days it's it's pink and white, and some days it's black, and some days it's big. We, we all have our confident colors that we like, you know, and um, that's what it is. Though it's confidence. If you if you have it, you're gonna fish it good, you know. Yeah. So if I'm rowing you down the river and you get one fly, and what's 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 Nick's confidence? Where where, you know, where's where's that at? It it. It's different from day to day, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I love it. I love it. Uh, I like something that that moves, got the side to side profile. You know, you, we all tie flies that uh, you're super pumped about, and you get in the water, and it's like this thing is completely dead. You know, let's cut it apart, reuse the hooks, whatever. But um, I think action over over color for me is is kind of what I look for, you know, in a fly. But I, but I don't really have a specific uh, pattern. Um, yeah. There's so many good ones out there. Uh, in case you're wondering. <laughs> a lot of them are very similar. Yeah, so, that's true. You know, that's, um, that's the biggest thing I notice with, and this is not meant to be said in disdain, but with flies versus lures is like, there's so many different flies and they're all very similar. Yeah, Whereas there's, there's so many different lures and they're all so different. Yeah. You know? And I think that's why the Buford is so great. It just has the, um, and a lot of guys are fishing that pattern. Uh, it works, pushes a lot of water, you know, the, the yeah. design of it. Um, I think that's when you're throwing flies for game fish, you want something that, that pushes water um, so that fish can key in on that. You yeah. know? 
Well, and you have a similar dilemma, which is like, you know, do double tens catch a lot of fish on gear because it's a great lure or because nine out of 10 guys are throwing double tens? That's true. You yeah. catch a lot of <laughs> fish on flies yeah. because they're the yeah. only, you know, it's like, we don't know. We never will know, but. You see it, and, and Cowgirls was a, a prime example of uh, guys, it was the hot ticket. They were producing big fish, but, you know, they, were they different? Are, are muskies that smart? Like, I've never seen this before. Or is it just because a lot of guys were throwing them at the time, you know? I think you're yeah. absolutely right about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um... We got a couple of really good questions here. I don't know if you can see them, but I'll kind of parse through them. So I hear um, little, I see little tuggy. I don't yeah, know you're good. I'll, I'll, I anonymous attendee. That's a very interesting uh, name. I haven't heard that name before, but, um, uh, that a question. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, that's the name, but the question is kind of about like, um, I'll just try and summarize, you know, like we live in Wisconsin, you're up in Eau Claire. I'm in Madison. We both have very healthy fisheries. Mm -hmm. um some of those are natural some of them have been naturally stocked to get to that point like where do you where do you see the future of like wisconsin fisheries and muskie going what's what do you you know what do you like to see and i know this like for i don't mean to put you on the spot with hot button issues right mm -hmm. i don't care about all that crap but like just your perspective right it's one guy's perspective you have experience on the water like what do you what do you get jacked about or what do you get worried about maybe Oh man, I uh, <laughs> worries me is that the amount of pressure that is is becoming on the rivers, I, which you know that's kind of what got me onto the river thing from the start was was to get away from the lake pressure. Um, but it's also great to see um, you see like the tight lines group uh, in in the uh, river they're fishing there. Um, it's good to have people aware what's going on. You get more support. Um, you know, these waters are anyone can come and fish them, you know, yep. it's, um, that's a really good point. Yep. You know, so, so what worries me is, oh man, garbage is a big one, uh, in the Eau Claire area, especially, um, you know, eventually people got to pay people to come out and take care of that garbage. And then free access becomes either no access or, or, uh, pay access, you know? Uh, it, it, and it's real, dude. It's for those that don't think, Nick, we literally this week lost an access point on one of our musky rivers because a private landowner had allowed people to put in on his property and people dumped their trash and tires there and he locked what, it. Down. What a nice guy. And, and people and now it's locked. And I can't blame him, right? If people are dumping yeah, crap on my property. Say. Yeah, yeah no, but it's, you make a good point. Um, and we see with the, with the like, the paradox of pressure, but pressure also brings attention and support and, you know, tight lines. And, and like, I look at the driftless as a good example, cause it's like, that was a, that was a disaster zone two decades ago. It was, uh, it was almost gone. And now it's like the most well-funded fishery in the state. When you look at the whole, because Trout Unlimited is behind it, you got the groups involved. And what they've done then is sure there's the popular spots, right? That I'm not I'm not gonna hot spot the Kickapoo or Black Earth Creek, like read about it, it's everywhere. But yeah. now you get to go create more fisheries and bring more fisheries back. There might be little secret spots and you right. get more people into it. So it's that's how I tend to lean, but it's it's a tough one. It's for sure a tough one. Yeah, you know, and, and and social, too. I, I know social I, media is uh is uh it's a great thing because it involves people. Uh, people might see what really you can fly fish for musky. I want some of that, you know. Um, but it also, uh, you know, like I said, the the more pressure you bring to body water, the more dealings with garbage that that you have to tend to, you know. And and uh, you know, I, I've I've spent days picking up garbage on on the rivers. And uh, last summer, I had a I was out with some clients and I had a group of tubers come down, uh, completely drunk, went into a uh, tree overhanging in the river. They had like two tubes full of garbage. They just got sucked through this garbage every place. And, uh, you know, we spent like 40 minutes and, and the guys I was with were totally okay with it. But um, those guys had no, you know, they weren't going to pick that garbage up. So, um, 
so stuff like that, you know, people, uh, the, the fly community is great because they're, uh, they're, uh, they, they love the environment. You know, I, I see a lot of that, uh, happening where maybe I don't notice in the conventional side as much. Yeah, I agree. It's, yeah. And that's, that is, it, it can't, it has to be though, what we can't be the only ones responsible for it, but we have to be responsible, right? Like you hope that you can talk and get it out there. Like just pack in, pack out, or, you know, yeah. no yeah. glass or, I mean, literally there's a guy on the call. Cause I see him in the chat. He knows he watched me pick a plastic bag, which we think was full of human feces out of the lake the other day. Oh, and it was man. just like, I was gross to fuck out about that. But like, I'm not going to go to my local watering hole and see literal. You didn't, you didn't feel like opening it up to uh, find out for sure. huh? I did not. The smell, the smell <laughs> was enough to know it was close. It was, it was, I didn't want to open it up. But yeah. I believe you. For sure. Did you say we didn't catch a fish in that spot either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, kind of a different different question another one that we got from travis troy what's up travis um he asked how do you recommend building confidence in gear when you're first starting out kind of the like am i doing this right question uh other than hiring Nick, on the gear side or the uh the actual but, no, just, uh, yeah sorry we're uh your fly fishing gear um yeah i mean i think confidence in that and i'll just plug it one one real good way to do that travis is to hire a guy like nick to take you out but what what are your thoughts otherwise nick yeah um talk to a guy like dan uh you know he runs a, a musky fly shop uh he he would give you a good uh understanding and and what to look for um social media is huge you know look at what guys are using what they're um what they have confidence in uh chippewa river rods are are a big one and there's others out there um you know every to each their own you know everyone has their own thing that they have confidence in and this goes back to the confidence game you know uh it's it's wire over over fluorocarbon you know i mean if you got confidence in whatever fish it you know but um it also comes down to using your gear and seeing what it's got, you know, putting it to the test. Um, but I'd say, listen to the, the guys you're, you're following on social media, um, guys like Dan, you know, uh, he'll, he'll put you in the right direction. I'm sure. So, uh, I, Nick, Nick, you were not paid to say that, but I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> that oh, wasn't the agreement. Might, might be the <laughs> other Dan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, that's, uh, um, when you're looking at fly rods, uh, you see it now more so in the last few years, uh, specialty rods. Um, over over the, the average 10 weight isn't going to cut it uh, and be everything you want in a musky fly rod, you know. So look look for a specialty rod. You might, you might spend a little bit of money, but you won't be disappointed, you know. Yeah. Uh, the beauty of the thing with fly fishing is everything comes at a high price, man. <laughs> yeah. I think and musky, right? And I, I think the way well, I talk, with everything, yeah. Yeah, true. But the way I talk about it with musky is like, I don't know, and I'll probably piss people off about this. I don't care. But like, if you're going trout fishing in the driftless, it's an amazing experience. I encourage everybody to do it if you're in Wisconsin. And hire a guy. I see PJ's on here. Hire a guy like PJ or Nick. Like they're awesome guys, and they'll show you how to do it. It's technical like you can you can get away you know you're gonna catch a 12 inch 15 inch maybe an 18 inch fish it's great you can get away with a pretty decent setup you're going after musky i mean you are literally you could spend a, a year or two years chasing a fish that you get one chance at that if you have a crappy rod it could break if your knot's not tied right it'll snap if your line's too old it'll like i just don't mess around with that stuff i'm not saying you need the the winston you know rod to go catch a muskie but just take your gear seriously i guess would be my point i don't know if you think there's I'm different gonna... price points and uh Great. you know if, if you spend less and, and it fails i mean what do you expect you know um usually yeah. something a rod with a uh, uh, higher price point has a great uh, warranty you know tom he's he's a great guy to work with uh you know he'll, he'll bend over backwards for you you know yep uh, and that, that's the kind of thing I look for in, in a, um, in gear. Yep. I don't, I'm not really one brand specific, but if I get treated good, 
um, by, by a brand, I'm going to stick with it. You know, right. I, I have faith in it. So kind of on that topic, we, I don't know if I shared this with you, but, um, we like to at least for like five minutes on every one of these, you know, I think folks really love to hear like, what gear do you have faith in? Right. Cause we're talking about, you know, Travis has a question about how do I build confidence in my gear? And a lot of that can come from, well, what is a guy like Nick fish? So what, just run us through a little bit of like maybe rod line leader setup as terms of what you like, what, you know, and obviously it's a, it's a moving target, but what are you, what are you running? You talk about Chippewa. Is that, is that your rod of choice? Yeah. I'm uh, you know, he makes both a, a 10 and 12. Um, I own both. Uh, the, the 12s I, I really uh, are my go-to rods. Um, whether it's fishing a smaller musky fly or, or big, um, the reason I like them is because when you get to, to play the fish at the boat side, that's where it's key. And um, the tens can do it. You know, they're they're a little more beefy than your your average ten weight out there. But uh, the twelves just have what it takes at at boat side. You know. Oh man, I it's love to hear you say that. Good. I love to hear you say that. And I didn't mean yeah. to interrupt you, but it's like. If you have never figurated a medium heavy eight foot bait casting rod, you don't know because don't know. speed, speed and control. Like I'm not saying you can't get them on tens or eight weights. You know, Tommy's eight weight is actually a decent musky stick because it's basically a ten weight. But yeah, like, right. I totally, I love that you said that because that is so true. I did it and I was like figure eighting a gear rod for the first time in five years. Like I said earlier, I was like, holy yeah. shit, I forgot about it. It just, it tracks so mm. much mm. better. Yeah. And, and you can, you know, that's um, going into figure eights. I think that's where I see guys struggle the most is, um, you know, you, you can, you can turn a fish on. Not every fish that you raise um, is going to eat. But you can you can entice a, a fish that is maybe interested uh, in that boat side eat, and that that is changing your depths in your figure eights, getting that that fly when it's when it's near the boat when you're coming to the boat, get it deep, you know, get that fish away from the boat because chances are that's what's going to happen at the boat is that fish is going to see it and he's going to be gone. Yep. So, but, but you can really play with that with that twelve weight rod. You can really get that figure eight, you know, deep and up and just all all around, you know. Totally agree. Um, I don't know what you think about this, but as, in my experience, you know, if I get a fish to follow me to the boat, I think whether or not I catch it, miss it, don't catch it, don't. There is something I could have done to trigger strike. That fish was interested enough to leave its comfortable couch, come follow my fly, come go around and sniff. And even the low and slow ones, man, it's like, what was it just more? Was it? And I don't, I don't know what it is, right? We all talk about, oh, sometimes you know, speed it up in the corner and that works. But it's yeah. like you got that fish to come all the way to the freaking boat, and it's kind of what you're saying. We're like a lot of that, a lot of that goes down right there. It's that close quarter fist fight, and I think it's overlooked. I mean, I fish with guys that. I'm not going to throw them out on blast, but like they don't figure eight. And they're like, I don't want to catch one on a figure eight. And like, <laughs> all I heard you say is I don't want to catch a muskie because it's like that, that just, it happens too much. You, you if you uh, don't get that game down, you're going to have so many missed opportunities. Um, so I think that's a huge one it is really, I mean, it's an intimidating fish. I see people that are guys, whatever, uh, they almost freeze up when they see a fish and it's like don't do that try to keep that fly working um you know and every fish is different how it reacts so slow lazy deep follows in my opinion that fish isn't going to eat you know it's just rarely waste, waste time to cast again yeah um you get those fish that are nose up to the fly you can almost see them kind of quivering a little bit behind it speed it up they speed up with it you know those are the fish that you can you Come know on. you you can force them to eat you know yeah. in, in yeah. a way agreed um and, and if you got a fish that's coming hot you speed it up speed it up he's behind it give it a pause that fish is going to run into it you know he's he's going to eat it 
Yeah, you know, he's, no, he's you're... focused on that. So I love that you point. brought up the the like kind of freeze up because I think it's another kind of like a magical cool part about musky is that you know you can have a grown ass man or woman who's an experienced angler and like you get a fish to eat in dark stained water out of nowhere next to the boat that you've never seen and i guarantee you're just going to be like oh like, what the fuck yeah. was that? like what was yeah. that you just like it's the coolest <laughs> thing ever because it's just like you know could have yeah. been on like the fifth figure eight for all you know and it's just there it is yeah. you know it's it's amazing it's amazing that's probably the best part of, of musky fishing and then uh you know i had a guy last year very first time fly fishing i think he's maybe eight cast he got a 40 inch musky you know he, he was doing his figure it's really good but he could only throw maybe i don't know 20 feet you know just that says was, something that says yeah, something you know. right there though but but he uh he he did a perfect his figure it's were spot on uh just in an area where you know in a river if you're fishing a deeper hole you get a lot of fish to come shoot up from the bottom you know at both side um and, and that's exactly what happened but he he kept his cool you know first musky uh, maybe his eighth tenth cast on, on on the fly rod you know so that was kind of i mean th that doesn't ever happen but uh it did and, wow. and it just shows you that figure eights are huge i know, know? and it's and it's just like sometimes you just gotta just expect that musky are just fuckers man because i know i can see them on here there's dudes on here i know that have been grinding it out for two years working their asses off going to the right spots doing the right thing <laughs> will come together and i don't know that they're doing anything wrong honestly like it's just it's, it's just eventually going to come together well, uh, well. You know, there, yeah. there are tons of of uh i guess, I guess if if somebody gets a hold of me and they're like hey i really want to catch a muskie on the fly um not not to stir up more business but to be honest with you uh, if you book a guide book you know two three days um for musky for sure yeah you know uh that's your better odds because you you know in two three days you're gonna at least encounter some fish and and have some reactions you know um to go out one day yeah that's that's kind of like yeah it could happen or it couldn't you know right Especially if it is that, like, I want to get my first one. And it's like, yeah, well, it's going to totally, totally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, let me just check our time here because I know we're, I like to keep this tight. Um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, we're coming up here kind of on the turn of the season uh, into, you know, the summer transition to fall into fall. As far as the line leader setup, what are you, what are you running? Um, you know, and, and again, we don't, I like, I like that you said you don't have any allegiances to brands. Like what are you, what are you a fan of? What are you so far not a fan of and whatever you're willing to share, I think people would find interesting. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, <clears throat> I've had some great luck with the SA Muskie series. Um, Airflow big game is another great one that I've had good luck with. Uh, do you, what do you like on that 12? Do you like the 500 or you go, you go uh, big way, seven hundo? <laughs> I, I got whatever. I don't know offhand, but it's the biggest one they got. Yeah, it's that seven. Oh. Then. There yeah, you go. yeah. So that, that really is a, a great setup for, for that rod. But, yeah. um, you know, line is uh, – I've had some bad luck with, um, with the Rio over the years, uh, the Muskie series. That's just, you know – me personally, I know guys love it. Uh, you want to hear a story on that one? <laughs> sure. I hope Dave's not on the phone. If you are, Dave, I'm sorry. So we sell Rio. We just started selling it. And I was super skeptical because I had the same issue, right? The Rio Pike Muskie. Yeah. And I always said, dude, it casted like a dream for a week. And then it was like, man, this is falling apart. And it's cracking and breaking. And when I sat down with the folks at Rio to like say, we'd love to carry Rio. Like, I like what you guys are doing and you know make a good product you know but sure. there was an issue we had like there was a serious issue and it's not only my perspective like just i encourage like you should just go check out the musky fly fishing facebook group and see what they say because it's like a lot of people yeah and he without even without even he's like say no more i know we the real pike musky it was like over it was like an entire production run 
I'm going to get in trouble for saying this shit. I don't care. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, they, nobody's listening anyways. So. Yeah, right. No one's <laughs> listening. Nobody cares, man. Um, they did not apply the coating between the core and the fly line. Oh, really? And when I heard that, I was like, that's exactly what happened. That's why it just fell apart. So uh, yeah, they, it, it was like separating, exposing yeah. the core is what. I had the issue with exactly. multiple multiple times, you know. Exactly, and it was an entire production batch of like three thousand or four thousand, and it was wow. the Rio Pike muskies only. Um, and it was like it makes perfect sense, but they like got their shit together. They may a copa. They know what they did, and I haven't fished it long enough to tell you for sure. But the Elite Predator is like, it's awesome. Is it? I mean, it's already lasted longer than the Pike muskie, which is a month. Um, yeah. But, like, it's great. And they're all great. Like, they all have their – but I was like, it's just a funny story because everybody's like, that real stuff, it didn't really work for me. I was like, they're, yeah, they, they, they shit the bed a little bit. But they're, they're digging <laughs> back out now. They're digging back out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, even on the um, SA side, uh, I'm probably going through in a season, burning through a spool or two of that, you know. And it's just how much do you use it? How do you take care of it? Uh, stepping on your fly line in the boat is is killer on fly line. Um, oh, and then like the midsummer heat and the, the yeah. sweltering algae blooms, and like yeah, and in like, and out of the boat. You know, I mean, it it's uh, the more you use it, and if you don't take care of it, it's gonna go to shit. You know, yeah. Um, me personally, I'm changing line every year, so it's kind of uh, it's it's a, a spendy uh, spendy deal, but it fly line goes bad. You know. Um, it does it sucks that it costs so much, but it does. <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, and it's you know it's similar to like I don't I mean I don't I was switching out my braided uh, mono all the time. You know it's 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 the business end. You got to take. Did you care. ever did you ever reverse your uh, one end if you had two reels? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, dude, when I was in college and high school, it's not like I had. I was, it was cheap. Had to do yeah. what I had to do, right? I was using some old Zepco crap. I was, you know, I was, <laughs> I was making whatever work. Yeah, at least uh, you were fishing, though, man. That's all that matters. Right, that is that is what matters. Uh, that is what matters. Uh, not super exciting, but leader setup. What do you like to run? Oh, man, I, uh, for years, I ran a uh, cheap trialing big game, uh, like 40 pound. I, I think it was trialing or Berkeley, whatever. Uh for a long time, you know, and, and that was great line. It was cheap. Uh, over the last maybe five, six years, I, I've been on uh, uh, Maxima is, is what I've been yeah. running. Yeah. And Maxima you did- or Floral, uh, 40 pound. Uh, <laughs> I keep, uh, one, one thing I like to mention is going into figure eights and how a lot of your action is going to come into those figure eights. I see guys show up with uh, nine foot traditional you know length leaders and it's like you you know i'm running a foot of 40 pound maybe 12 inches of uh of wire floral so you know muskies for the most part our water is here that we're fishing tannic water brown stained uh muskies aren't leader shy you know they're not line shy uh make you cast better too you shorten that leader up yeah exactly but just your figure eights are going to be huge, you know? Yeah. What do you, I, I love to hear you talk about this and I, I have a perspective, but like the figure eights and this is where like, I think about my knots and I even put a little bit of like resin on my knots. Cause I hate, hate, hate one. I want to feel my knot. Cause when yeah. I'm fishing at night or dark, that's like the indicator of, okay, I'm, I'm get ready. Right. Mm-hmm. Time to do your eight. But I don't want it to stop. I don't want it to bump. I don't want it to. Do you have any like hot tips that you could share with us on how you know, or is it just at pretty night clear? time? No, uh, no, sorry, I wasn't oh. clear. Just like <laughs> how you how you set up your leaders, um, kind of knot wise to be really oh. smooth in a figure eight. Yeah, so I'm I'm running. Uh, I don't have faith in snaps personally. I've had I've had a few fail on me just on casting. Yep. Uh, or or on fish. So I'm running your basic loop to loop connection perfection loop um my fly changes are super easy uh whether i'm running floral or or wire um if if i fish a fly all day with floral i'm gonna cut that floral off and re you know um floral's great but uh you know it's expensive 
Um, but don't be lazy. Change it, you know. You get one fish on it, don't take a gamble. Just cut it, rewire it, whatever, you know. Even you, 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 you know, get it up in a big hot mess of rocks and timber. And like, yeah, you might yep. want to check it and change it. And honestly, the same goes for your wire leader, too. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. I no, think that, I was got great. <laughs> that was great, brother. Uh, yeah, keep, keep those leaders, you know, clear water guys, yeah, maybe different, you know. Um, we keep them leaders short. Yep. Uh, better figure eights. And, and, you know, maybe on that figure eight, have have a photo. Basically, your your leader, your bite guard is all you really want, you know. Yep. No, agreed. And honestly, with most of the line we're using and you're using, whether it's sinking or full intermediate, like, it's not like the end of that line is like hot orange, right? It's usually like a yeah. pale blue or a black yeah. or a brown. So it, it, it blends, you know, yeah. it's, it's, yeah. Um, we got one more question and then I'm going to kind of wrap it up and, and do some stuff. Cause I like to like to keep it to eight, but uh, let's see. Joseph has a question about line. Do you have, you have issues with your sinking line coiling up? Thin sinking line seems to always get that way eventually. Stretching the line and letting go behind the boat as you drive seems to help straighten it out. Any way to prevent it? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you use your gear a lot, um, if it sits on that reel a lot, it's going to get coily. Um, if you're using it often, it's not going to get as coily. Uh, stretching your line uh, often, um, even – you know, I'm not big on, sorry, Dan, you probably saw this at your shop there, but I'm not big on fly line dressing or cleaner. Um, it's like our, dude, it's like our hottest product. You just sunk. My <laughs> I'm sorry, man. That's just my opinion though. I don't know. Shit. <laughs> uh, but I just, I keep my fly line clean. Uh, you know, microfiber cloth, maybe that's not the way to do it in some water. Um, you know, that that's huge. Uh, I agree. If you're, I mentioned stepping on the line. Uh, if you're in and out of the boat during small mall season, in and out of the boat often, sand in the boat, guys stepping on line, grinding that sand in that line, um, that just makes it go to shit fast. Yeah. Especially you know? with those boots in fall or shoes, yeah. The yeah. only other thing I think you nailed it. I think I totally agree. That's going to be the number one and number two and number three reason. The only other thing I would think about, Joseph, is looking at the temperature rating of your line and the temperature, you know, like if I'm using, this is a super basic example, but I do occasionally throw some saltwater lines still. If I'm using a saltwater line for muskie in fall, it is going to coil up like a snake. <laughs> And I, there's nothing I can do about it. I can stretch it out. It'll coil back up. And the same can happen with line design for colder water in the hot summer. It'll get a little sticky and it'll just start to do weird shit on you. So just think about that a little bit. But more often than not, it's what Nick said. Clean it. And But it's- that is huge too, the temperature ratings for sure. You yeah. Know? And, and if you're looking for a musky line, I'm sure, Dan, you you know what that's all about. You got it in your shop. We got there. a few of them. We got a few. Got <laughs> trust a few. this guy. Don't trust me. <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. And just to wrap up, Nick, dude, this was so much fun. I appreciate yeah, man. it. I just – I wanted to hit one more thing because you said it, and a couple people said it in the comments. Like, you know, when we're talking about water and we're talking about more people getting involved, that's a good thing. We it all is. need to get involved, though, with the sport and with the watersheds, with the fisheries. Join your local muskie. Respect your water. Yeah, <laughs> whether it's Muskies, Inc. or Trout Unlimited, some of the chapters aren't good. Some of the chapters are great. The only way to care, though, is to get involved, right? And it, I sound like I'm on my soapbox, but I think we touched on it enough today. And it's, 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 where, it's where this all kind of, you know, we're sitting here. We got flood conditions. We got drought conditions. I don't care what you believe in terms of climate science, but like shit's changing. And the more people on the water, like the more people that are involved, I think we have a fighting chance and, you know, we'll still be catching muskie in 20 years, not just car. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It can only get better um, from here. I think, you know? Yeah. I, I sure hope so. I sure hope so. But dude, uh, Nick, this is awesome. Everybody who's on the call, if you're looking for a trip, Eau Claire, Wisconsin area, strip and rip you can google it nick markowitz he's the man we had a lot of fun brother you'd be good Thank Let's you, man. i appreciate it
Good night, dude. We'll see you. And thanks, everybody else. Have a good one.